It's springtime and summer and camping season is just around the corner. Who doesn't like to cook over a campfire? But balancing your pot on the edge of the fire and taking a chance on spilling the soup, or worse, spilling the coffee first thing in the morning, just isn't acceptable. A nice tripod is just the thing to make, and it's a simple blacksmith project. You can do it in an afternoon. Let's go into the shop and see how I did this. For this project, I'm going to start with some 5 8 round bar. Depending on how heavy a pot you're going to hang from this tripod, you can probably get by with half inch round bar. And it also depends on how tall it's going to be. Obviously, the taller it is, the easier it's going to be to bend it, so the heavier you'd want it. The first bar I pulled off the rack was short of 10 feet, so when I cut it in half, I ended up with 58 inches. So we have three 58 inch pieces to make this from. Like so many of these things, unless you're selling them as a standard item that you're going to make over and over again to the exact same specs, the exact length of this doesn't matter. If you're using it for yourself or giving it as a gift, just make it out of what you have on hand. And yes, you could probably make this out of rebar if rebar is what you have on hand. I just don't like working in rebar myself, so you won't ever see me doing that. I'm going to start by putting a point on these. Now you can see these are kind of in my way. That's one of the disadvantages of a small shop and where I have the forge compared to where I typically work. But I can do this. I've done this before. So this just needs to be kind of a blunt point. And that's just to keep the legs of the tripod from spreading out while well, you've got a heavy pot full of boiling soup on there. Now you'll notice that I'm holding this bar up off the anvil. It's not flat, so I'm not pushing the point down so one side's even. By setting half of my taper that I want for the point by holding the bar up, and the other half by tipping the hammer, I can end up with a nice symmetrical taper here. That's about all we really need, and we'll do that to all three bars. And for this set, at a round bar, that's all I'm going to do on, for that end. If I were doing this out of square bar, I might put a twist in the middle somewhere. So you really don't have to rotate this 360 degrees, just turning it 90 is all you really have to do to keep it an even taper. Although you may need to clean it up a little bit by rotating it, but it's not a big deal. There's two. Now honestly, this is where the 25 pound little giant with the drawing dies really pays for itself. Especially if you're doing these in some sort of production oriented mindset, which quite often I do. Now at the other end of these, I want to put a round ring on all three bars, and I want to interlock two of those rings on the third ring. Now you can just make a wild guess and make a ring and hope it's the size you want, or you can calculate it. And even for, for this, a rough calculation is good. The number you really need is pi or 3.14, but for this, multiplying times three is close enough. So if you want a two inch diameter ring, this is 5 8 bar, so you measure to the center, which would be 2 and 5 8 inches. And if you round that off to 2 and a half or 2 and 3 quarters, it'll be close enough. And then multiply that times 3. So if you round it up to 2 and 3 quarters inches instead of 2 and 5 8, that equals 8 and a quarter inches that you're going to need 
to obligate for this ring. And it's kind of worth knowing that because it makes your life a little easier in the long run, especially if you're not using any kind of a jig to bend these. In a future video, I'll talk about some similar projects that work a little different, but they're still for campfire cooking. And I'll show you some jigs, and they eliminate the need for figuring out the math because you kind of bend it in a different order than what I'm going to do here today. But working by hand at the anvil, this is the way we would do it. Before I start bending this, I just want to chamfer the very end of this so there's not a sharp cut edge. You could do this cold with a file or a grinder. I just want to make sure there's nothing somebody's going to cut themselves on later. So I know I need eight and a quarter inches for my ring, so I can offset eight and a quarter inches at the edge of the anvil. And I'm just going to start forging that down. You can see that already wants to form a ring. So we're well on our way. This is cooling off a little while I talk about it, so this may not happen in one heat. But there's a good chance you could do it in one heat, especially if you're working in half inch bar. But you can form this pretty readily right there at the horn of the anvil. I'm going to get that hot to refine it. Now from a functionality point of view, the rings don't have to be perfect. From a pride and craftsmanship point of view, you might as well try. That ring's way off there, but I think I can fix that. Just takes a little bit of fiddling and a little fussing. Like doing scrolls, try not to hit it too many times in the same place. That's a good way to screw it up. And that is a perfect two inch diameter ring. So we need to do that two more times. So again, I want to chamfer the, the end just very lightly, just making sure there's not a sharp spot that somebody will snag a finger on. And I want to offset eight and a quarter inches. Put a little bend in there. That starts that bending. Certainly easier to do at the horn. So I think we'll move the camera and take a look at it over the horn. Sometimes if you kind of sneak up on it and get it round but too large, it's fairly easy to round up. I hope my arm is not in the way. So there's another nice ring. Let's do a third one. I'm going to start this one the same way. I'm going to do the little chamfer on the end. I'm going to offset it eight and a quarter inches on the edge of the anvil. And I'm going to make this bend. But what else can you use if you don't have a horn? This might be a good place for a bending fork. You can get that in there and you can do quite a bit of bending with it. This is a little bit awkward to do by hand. This fork's a little short. So that means an anvil mounted fork might be better. 
That can do a lot of work. Unfortunately, I'm going to hit the camera before I get all the way around there. You need a lot of room at the edge of the anvil to do this. But that can also help refine that first bend if it starts to go wonky like that. What are some other possibilities that might help us out here? Don't have an anvil cone, you could just make a piece of pipe with a, a hardy shank. Now this one's got a little stub here so you can hook things in to bend it. It's just this 5 8 round bar is way too fat for that. So there's another way you can bend a, a nice circle. Use your imagination. You can lock something in a vise to do that. Lots of different ways you can get a good circle. Like so many things though, learning to do it freehand at the anvil is your best bet. So we have our three rings. It's just a matter of linking this ring with those two rings. Hmm, maybe it's easier said than done. Or is it? Just offset this. Big enough you can get it through here. And bring this back up to heat. I've staged the first two bars where they're easy to get at. I can now link this in here real quickly. Bring it up to the anvil. Clean that ring up. Now you can't get this back into a, a form very easily, but if you've done everything right, you shouldn't need to. And try and round it up as best you can. And now we have a tripod that is all connected. And it's all ready to go put over a campfire. So with the rings connected, you're probably never going to lose a piece. You just set that up over your fire. Stick the legs in the ground so it doesn't slide out on you. Take a, an S-hook and hang it from one of the rings. And you can use as many S-hooks or a piece of chain as you need to to hang your pot over the fire and you're ready to cook. This is way better than balancing that pot over the, the rock on the edge of the fire and hoping you don't kick it in all of a sudden. And this heavy set will cook a pretty big pot. You could probably hang a five gallon pot on here if you can get it up high enough off the fire. Now off the, the ground, the top of the set's about 48 inches. The bars ended up being Oh, about 52 inches long overall. Again, none of those numbers matter. If you need something bigger, make it bigger. If you need it smaller, make it smaller. You could certainly get by with half inch material. If it's smaller, you could go to three quarter inch material if you're making something great big and monstrous. Just whatever works for your camping setup or the people that you're making it for. So that's just a good getting ready for summer and going camping project. Or it's a good project in the fall for hunting season. Make a great Christmas gift if you're watching this in the winter and thinking about Christmas. Anybody that cooks over a campfire would probably love to have one of these. And we'll show you some other versions of it in upcoming videos. We'll even talk more about S-hooks and adjustable chain hangers and trammel hooks that are adjustable ho S-hooks in future videos. In the meantime, I hope you found that interesting. I hope you can give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. Watch a few of the other videos. Share the videos with your friends. But do get out, of the sh out into the shop. Make something. Stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. And we'll see you for the next one.